Hello parents! Welcome to the Art Literacy Program. I'm excited for a fun year. We've got a lot of veterans out there and then um, a lot of new names, which I'm really excited to get to know you. If you see me in the halls, please feel free to grab me. Tell me who you are. A lot of times I know the names, but I don't know the faces. But you know my face from this dorky video. Um, so if you feel super confident, don't feel like you have to watch the videos, but they're here to help kind of run you through a lesson and see what, what it should look like in the class so that hopefully you go in super confident. And always feel free to call, email, text me. Um, I'm here to help out and I'm usually pretty easy to get. Um, so just getting started for the beginning of the year. When you come in to teach your lesson, I feel like it's best to get there like this lesson, like five minutes early, because there really isn't any setup, but it just gives you a minute, just in case you get to the art cart and notice that the pictures aren't on the cart, which sometimes happens. And um, then you can um, text me or you can pull up the Google Calendar and just look and see who had the cart last, hop into that classroom, get the pictures, and get going and teachers are super flexible and super helpful but it just I feel like it's nice to go in feeling like not rushed or stressed and you know you've got everything where you need it to be and um, so when you go in you'll sign in at the office and then as you come out of the office you just go to your left towards the multi-purpose room and on the right hand side of those big blue doors there's a teeny little hallway and um, there's one door and then the lunch room and you'll go in that door and you'll see like a laminator and rolls of butcher paper and lots of just paper everywhere. They call it the paper room. Um, and on there, in there will be the art cart. It's just a rolling cart with the supplies. Um, it should be pretty easy to find, even though it's a small space. There's a ton of stuff in there, but it's, you know, pretty easy to find what you need. If it's not there, you can always go to Mrs. Bigelow. She'll help you out or give me a call. I'll run over if I'm home. Um, or you can pull up the Google Calendar, look and see who had the cart last. Sometimes um, people schedule lessons back to back and they're running a little bit late. And if that happens, usually what you can do is just go in and take the, um, take the art cart with the pictures and they'll bring you the supplies that they're finishing up with. Um, they'll just come drop them off in your room. You can say, I'm in Mrs. Hall's room and they'll come drop it off to you. All right, so like I say, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. I'm here to help. Um, so this is our artist for the month, Georgia O'Keeffe, and she is definitely an American icon. It's great when artists get to be famous during their lifetimes, when they get to be comfortable and established and their work's appreciated, and that was the way for Georgia O'Keeffe. Although interestingly, her personality, she really was kind of a shyer person, kind of quiet. She liked to be alone, liked to... Um, kind of just do her thing out hiking in the New Mexican desert is kind of where she was happiest. Um, so it's interesting that even though her work was put on a stamp during her lifetime, um, she was recognized as one of the founders of the um, American modern art movement. Um, she kind of kept to herself and really interesting. I think she was really known as a like the feminist movement, um, which really ramped up during the 60s, right? really wanted to take her on and make her kind of a poster child for their movement. And she vehemently declined. Declined. She um, she said she should be known as an artist, not a female artist. There shouldn't be a distinction. Artists are artists. And that is a feminist thing. Of course, she was a feminist, but she didn't, she just didn't want to be tied to another group, which I think is kind of interesting. Um, and maybe that is part of the her growing up on a rural dairy farm. I don't know, you know, maybe you kind of just end up kind of quiet. But Georgia O'Keeffe did great in school. She was recognized and she won some prestigious awards during her time in college. And then she taught art at several colleges, including Columbia. Um, but she just felt so constrained, trying to portray things exactly as they were. So she began to focus more on like, the line, the shapes in the picture, um, and using these bright colors to show her emotion. And she said many times that for her, her work was about showing people what she was feeling, what she was feeling inside. And um, this one is all about music for her. It's, um, so, you know, these are her feelings. This is her feeling when she listens to music, which I think is so, um, so interesting and I think it's great as you look at these to just say to the students 
you know, what do you think? What do you think? So what do you think that means? What do you think she was feeling? Do you think she felt happy? Do you think she felt sad? What does this make you feel? Um, because those are the questions that teach kids to be to love art and to be able to look at art and love art. It's not about necessarily knowing um, art terminology, but just about looking at the pictures and saying, this makes me just feel so happy. I just feel energized and, and say, yeah, that's awesome. And somebody else might say, I don't know, I think it feels angry. It's so red. I Red to me is an angry color. Um, and you say, yeah, that's right too. That feels, you know, that's awesome. That's exactly right. Um, so it's just a good, you know, good thing. Um, point out to the kids how she, you know, she's showing the flowers really close up. She's showing the details. Sometimes the works go beyond showing the flowers. So, I mean, so for example, you know, you can tell that this is hibiscus and a plumeria. You can see what they are. This was her, oops, sorry. This was her time in Hawaii. Um, so you know what flowers these are. But here is an up close of an iris. And if you looked at this, you might not even know this was a flower, right? Why do you think she did that? Why do you think she went so, why do you think she zoomed in so close in this painting? What does this make you feel? What does this make you think? Um, just, you know, just talk it through with them a little bit. I think it's good to repeat their name over and over so that the kids can kind of get a sense because nothing is better than when your kids go on a trip. Well, to me, I don't know. I love, so I, I've had kids go, you know, go on a trip and say, I was in Chicago and I saw a Jackson Pollock painting or, you know, or I saw that guy who does all the splatters. Who is that guy? That's Jackson Pollock. Oh yeah. That's, I love that. That's awesome. That's igniting a love of art in those kids. Um, but, you know, don't stress out about the dates too much. I like to kind of put it in perspective for them. And that's easier to do later on in the year when we've had a few artists, when you can say, okay, she was born in 1887, which, you know, is not that long ago. She, she died, let's see, I can't even remember. She died in 1986. You know, most of your parents were born then. Most of your parents were born when she died. So it wasn't that long ago. But I don't stress out about the dates too much. Don't emphasize that too much because they're not really going to remember it. And, and this is about having fun and looking at great art, right? Um, so, you know, talk to them about it. You know, what do you think this is? This is the way this is, this is the way this picture is centered, but look, we could probably center it a different way and get something totally different. That's kind of cool, right? I and mean, that's a cool thing about abstract art. And one of the fun things to kind of run the kids through um, at this point is just the different types of art. So there are the four main subjects of art. There's a portrait, which is a picture of a person, a landscape, which is a picture of a place, um, a still life, which is a picture of a thing, and then an abstract, which is a picture that we can't really, we don't really know for sure what it is. It might be just a design, it might be your emotions on the page, or it might be a picture of an iris that's blown up really close, and there really was, you know, there really is a subject to it. Um, Georgia O'Keeffe was one of the first artists to really paint abstractly, and that's really cool, right? Um, what emotions do you think? She was also the first artist to combine a landscape with a still life. And I probably ought to get a better example for that. Um, there are others. She really was interested in bones and like the cow skulls that she found in New Mexico or the bones that she'd find out hiking in the desert. So she'd combine these skulls with flowers, which we see all the time today, right? But it was new when Georgia O'Keeffe did it, and that's really cool. And then sometimes she'd put them like in the sky above a landscape. I will get one of those printed out and put them on the cart for you guys to be able to show that. That was a completely new thing. It blew people's minds. Nobody had ever seen a landscape with an object that didn't belong there, like hanging in the sky. And, and so she created this whole new, um, subject for art that didn't fit in those four categories specifically. And that's really cool, right? I mean, we still don't, we didn't like name it and make it a thing, but, um, but it is so cool that she did it. 
So talk to the kids about it. And then I just want you to throw out, we've got a whole bunch of silk flowers. Um, just, you know, you can throw just a handful out on the tables or spread them around on the desks and say, hey, feel free to trade and share. But let's look at this and let's look at this flower and see how, look at how the petals, like some of them really curl in and they're super curly and some of them are flat and poke straight up. And look at how it's red down in the base and it kind of gets lighter and lighter out to the yellow. That's really cool, right? That's cool. Um, or, you know, look at, look at how at the top where you can see the light coming down from the ceiling, um, there's some highlights, there's some almost white parts on the tips of these. And then at the bottom, look, they're yellow. It's the same color, but they're like a darker yellow because of the shadows. So just kind of walk them through. You don't have to do more than that. Just like a quick walk through and say, okay, think about that for your, for your picture. I want you to think about that and do something similar. And then you'll pass out the, well, you'll let the kids come and I would just pick tables, say table, you know, however the teacher does it, say this table or table one, green table, whatever, um, come up and you can pick a color and you're going to be able to get something kind of different. Look, I've started one here that's on a darker color and see how the colors stand out kind of differently. And then I'll have, I'll finish up some and start some so you can kind of see what it's like when you see the lighter colors up on a lighter page and the darker colors, they stand out a little bit differently. So keep that in mind when you're making your picture, what you, what you want it to be. Um, I'll have a few just started. You can just color along on there. I know some of, some of you guys have expressed a little bit of anxiousness about not being artistic totally doesn't matter. I have lots of examples up there. And what you can do is just to show them the best way to blend pastels, you just grab one of these and start coloring over the top of it. And then you awesome artists, I know there are a few people out there that are just amazing artists. Feel free, if you wanna show them, feel free and go for it. Just don't take too long um, showing them your awesome work because we want them to have time to work too, right? Um, I have gotten into that trap before. That's the only reason why I say that. <laughs> Where I'm like, oh, I gotta finish this up before I show you, um, or before I set you loose. But it's it's totally all right to, you know, to have something out here and just get it started, no big deal. So with pastels, we do it a little bit differently than we do with a lot of other media. Um, you, you use the pastel itself to blend. It's oily and it kind of, it's kind of thick, and if you blend that with your finger like you would a chalk, it will blend a bit, um, but I mean, it does work, but once you get a little bit heavier, it'll start just like balling up the pastel on the paper, so we don't want to do that, and we don't want to press too hard because pastels look the best when they're layered. So see how on this petal, I've started out with this kind of pinkish color, and then I'm going to just... I'm just going to layer in a little bit darker, corally color, and you'll see how it starts to kind of blend together. And then I'm going to get really red down at the base. And sometimes the pastels have this yucky stuff on the end, and you know, it really doesn't matter. It just makes your picture more interesting to have little flecks of different color. Because pastels look best when there are a lot of colors mixed in together. So see how my petals kind of starting to take shape here. And it's getting thicker. You'll notice, see how it's like smoother and thicker down here where I put a lot where it's, whereas up here, you know, you see a lot more of the tooth of the paper. And the tooth just means the little grooves that the, um, that the medium can hold on to. You can explain that to older kids. The younger kids, yeah, that's, that's maybe more than they need to know. Um, so see out here, I'm gonna make it yellow and I'm just, I'm just gonna blend this in and see how it'll kind of work together and blend. You'll notice I'm keeping my, um, I'm keeping my individual marks pretty close together and pretty small because if I make them really big like this, it's gonna be hard to blend. There's gonna be lots of space in between. But if I make them really small and close together, then they're gonna blend together to make one cool color all together and look really, um, look really nice. So see how I'm just going in all the way back into that red and see how they kind of blend and it looks, it looks cool and interesting. It makes it, 
um, makes it really work together. Now I can go back in with that medium lighter pink and blend over the top if I feel like it's getting too yellow. And I can go in, you know, with a different yellow and get some kind of highlighty tips. But by the time I'm done, and you'll want to crisp up, I'll want to crisp up the edges. That's always something I feel like we're working on. I'll take a darker color, like maybe this red or the orange, and I'll just kind of firm up those edges and make sure they look nice and smooth. And that's kind of something that I'm going to do when my picture is, you know, mostly done, is go back in where it needs it and smooth out the edges. And then look, when I'm done, it's really saturated with color, right? It looks really vibrant, like a Georgia O'Keeffe painting, huh? Um, so you can just kind of walk them through really quick. I really wouldn't spend much more than 10 or 15 minutes, um, except maybe the older kids might be a little bit more interested and want a little bit more biography. But remember, you only have an hour and you want them to have time that they can work. Um, so sometimes... Um, especially with like the fifth and sixth graders, I'll get them started. And then as I'm walking around, we'll just kind of talk a little bit more about her work. I'll throw out a few facts. Like, did you know Georgia O'Keeffe was a teacher? Do you know she taught, um, she taught at middle schools, but she mostly taught at colleges. Yeah, what do you think that would be like to be an artist and be a teacher? Hmm, that's kind of interesting. You know, or did you know she grew up on a dairy farm? Let's see, she was one of seven kids, right? One of seven kids. Can you imagine what it would be like to be an awesome big family of seven kids and live on a dairy farm? And it kind of just keeps them engaged. So they're working, um, but they're also thinking and learning a little bit about her at the same time, which is super fun. Like I say, please don't hesitate to let me know if you have any questions. And I hope you have a great experience teaching art literacy this year.